Hey peeps, what's up? I thought I'd start out the new year by showing you how you can make this an actual editing tool. First of all, hello peeps, my name is Steve Douglas, and today I thought I would start out the new year by showing you guys how you can take an Xbox controller, a PS3 controller, really any controller that you can use with your Windows PC and turn it into an additional editing asset. You basically can take this and make assign certain key functions to this controller as if it were a keyboard. This is basically the same way that most advanced and industrial keyboard extensions work, except they're a lot more refined and they offer a lot more dial-in ability. But some people just like to work with something different every once in a while and they like to have a dedicated system that can do specialized things. And so sometimes we have these just laying around, they're always connected to our computer, so why not take advantage of that and why not use it as an additional tool? So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that right now. All right guys, so the very, very first thing you guys are gonna do uh, in order to get this process rolling is number one, you're gonna wanna have a control but then number two, you're going to want to go to xpatter.com. Now, I've actually already downloaded this application. It does cost $9.99 US dollars that you can pay via PayPal. It, it's a very nice, very simplified site. This app has been downloaded over 4 million times, but he supports and creates this with his own time, his own efforts. He's the only person that makes it. And honestly, it's a really freaking awesome application that you can use with other things besides controllers. So keep that in mind. Enter your email and, you know, the host. So... Mine happens to be douglasc99 at gmail.com. Contact me for inquiries. And then you're gonna hit go, and then it'll take you through a series of dialogues that'll reroute you to PayPal so that you can pay for it there. And then it'll bring you back to the website where you can download the app, and it's gonna look something like this. Now, I've already key mapped a lot of my core functions, and I'm gonna go over how you can do that in just a second. I'm actually gonna redo it for you guys, just so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Now, just for reference, the way that I organize my folders is on my main hard drive, I have a folder called projects and inside that folder, I have all the projects I'm currently working on, but then I have a bin called editing assets. And that's just where I keep things that I can use all the time for pretty much any project. That way they're all in one solid location. I never have to worry about where they are and where they're going. And if I need to copy those to an external hard drive because I'm on the go, everything's right there. Just copy it all. They're not super, super huge. If they ever get bigger, I'll have to reorganize those. But for now, this works really awesomely and I recommend it to everybody. So inside here, I have a folder for apps and this is actually the only app I have right now uh, that kind of falls into this. So you have have XPatter here, double click that, and I already have the app launched, so I hope it doesn't double, nope it doesn't, and so this is the app that you'll get in a dialogue will pop up and it'll walk you through initial setup and whatnot, basic stuff, don't worry about it, everything's cool. You'll get something like this, now as you guys can see I've already laid out my controller, but I'm going to completely redo this just to show you guys how it's done. So I'm actually going to create a brand new layout, so I'm going to go over here, do 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 do, I'm going to click new. All right, and so I've completely dropped everything. Everything is gone, there's nothing, so boom. You'll get two dialog windows just like this. Now over here, image, what you can do is you can download, it'll show you that you can go to xpatter.com, uh, which is exactly what we're gonna do. This is where it should take you, and you can pick based on the controller that you have. If you have a custom controller for PCs, you can go here. If you have older consoles that you happen to have a USB controller for, you can use them here. For designers, those are for specialized controllers that you wanna remap for other key functions. But I'm gonna use an Xbox One controller, which is basically identical to an Xbox 360 controller. And so we come in here, we're gonna click on official Microsoft gamepads just to get what's up there. And then you can kind of pick, you know, the design and style that you like, because I'm gonna show you in a minute, how it doesn't really matter what image that you use. I really like this black one, that's the one I used before, but because I use that, I think I'm actually gonna come down here and I'm gonna use this one because it's nice and smooth. So you're gonna right click, copy image, you're gonna come back down here, reopen XPatter, and right here where it says paste, now you can't right click, you actually have to click paste, click paste right there, and boom, you can go ahead, click on sticks, you're gonna click enable. And now a little dialogue will pop up up here, and so what you have to do is you take the controller and you copy whatever it tells you to do. So I'm gonna push my stick left, up, and now it has mapped my left analog stick. You guys can kind of see there's a response there. In order to keep everything organized and not fall apart, you using your actual physical mouse, you're gonna click on this, drag it over here where it would be. So I'm using my left analog stick, which on an Xbox controller is up here. If you're on a PlayStation, I know that they're even and whatnot. You guys know the difference. You're smart people, I love you people. And so I'm gonna click on my right stick. It's gonna give me the same basic dialog box and basically that just figures out what's what because analog sticks work on a little bit differently than just standard face buttons. So we're gonna drag that, put it over that analog stick. We're gonna do the exact same thing for the D-pad. Up, down, left, right. Now the D-pad actually inserts like basic face buttons, so it does ask you to insert all of them. 
And you know, a lot of this is redundant information. If you understand what I'm doing, you guys can skip ahead a little bit. If not, make sure to hang out with me. I appreciate it, and I appreciate your company. You're nice people. I love you people. Wonderful. Wonderful. And so then you're going to come down to buttons. And this is where it gets a little more complex, and I actually probably should have told those guys to hang out if they already skipped ahead, because this is a little bit different. You're going to click on buttons, and now I have to manually click each button. So I click X, and then I'm going to come over here, and now it's over the X button. Click A. Come on over here, right over the A button, click B, and click Y. Now, I'm not doing this just for the purposes of keeping up speed and making sure this walkthrough flows a little smoothly, but down here you can actually name the buttons of what you want. So like for button 4, I could rename that to, you know, button Y, and then I can go ahead over, jump up here, click on, click on the X with my actual controller, and change that to, you know, button X. That way it's just a little more organized, and I highly encourage you guys to do that so that you can save your button layouts for various programs. That's what you do there. Um, you do have to do your bumpers this way, so I'm going to have to right-click my bumper. This is my left bumper, right bumper. Drag it over here for the right. And then triggers are completely separately, but don't forget about your start and select buttons. So you're going to hit start. And on an Xbox controller, I guess it's back, but um, on most controllers it's a select button. And then you come down here, your triggers are done separately. Left trigger, right trigger. I'm gonna go ahead, pull those down here to the respective image. And boom, you guys have just key mapped this entire controller. But as you can see here, everything is responding. It's nice and tight, which is great. Close this, and you're gonna come back over here. And this is the part where we're gonna start assigning specific key layouts. And I'm actually just gonna go ahead and load up my old one just to show you guys what's up and so I don't really mess up what I've already done. I've saved a previous one and you can actually create a folder inside of the application folder next to where XPatter would be. I recommend naming it controller layouts and I just did a basic layout. And this is what I was configuring earlier and as you can see all my buttons are responding, you know, everything's there. And all of your buttons are going to be blank because you guys have created a clean slate. What you're going to do is you're going to click on each individual button and you're going to assign it to a key. Now what you guys should see is completely blank, completely white, none of this blue is filled in, nothing's there. And so all that's going to do is assign that particular function to that particular button. Where a lot of people have questions is whenever it comes to the analog stick and how the mouse works. Now if I want to go up on the mouse, this is your mouse keypad function and if you hover over it, Towards the top up here, you can actually see where it says, press any key to click or assign mouse move up. And so that's, it does what it says. It moves the mouse up, moves the mouse down, up, down. Wonderball. And then you can even assign things like mouse wheel up and that's for scrolling, mouse, you know, some controllers have mouse wheel right. If you're on a Mac, your mouse can actually scroll left, right, which is super useful because my mouse doesn't actually do that. So, you know, there's an advantage. You can use that to scrub through timelines, which is freaking great. And then if you want to clear out something, you can actually click none and that'll erase that function from the controller. So I can go back in here and you can reassign or as you would like. Just per recommendation, I recommend assigning the alt, control, and shift keys to some of your triggers because those are buttons that you're easily gonna be able to hold and press other buttons while you're doing that because you'll still have your thumbs completely free. When you're editing, you're often using, you know, Command C or Shift C or you're using various keystrokes that make things a little bit faster. And so you can emulate that using this controller by assigning those buttons to these buttons. I'm not gonna go super in depth for how you can, you know, mess around with the controller because I'm still learning myself. There are even ways where you can basically erase, like if I were to hold the right bumper, I could assign a hotkey to that. They would erase the entire controller and I could assign brand new keys and a brand new layout just by holding that one bumper or whatever button I decide to assign to that and that's really really useful because if I want to suddenly switch from cutting to playback or if I want to switch from standard playback for maybe a radio edit to something I want to go into trim mode and so I can switch this to a completely different layout that's optimized for trimming versus cutting and whatnot. Just to show you guys that this program works I'm going to hop into Premiere really quick and I'm going to do some basic cutting. From this point forward I'm only going to use the controller just so you guys can see what the functionality of things are and how things work. Now keep in mind that a lot of these options can be optimized and changed, such as curve mouse and cursor speed. That can all be changed. I believe I have it set to its highest mouse speed right now, but I may be wrong. Again, I'm learning just as much as you guys. And just so you guys know while I'm on that topic, if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, or if you would like me to explore an idea and make a video about that, please leave it in the comments down below. It would really, really help me out a lot and I appreciate it. So right now I'm completely controlling this with my controller. I can come in, I've assigned my X key to be my mouse left button and so I'm, I'm scrubbing right now I'm scrubbing using my Xbox controller which is pretty freaking awesome and so I'm gonna go ahead and I have assigned play to my 
Y button. And from, just so you guys know, this is the intro for my gaming channel. As you guys can see, I'm in here and I'm actually cutting, I'm actually editing. And so I've assigned X as my C button and that instantly pulls up the blade tool. I can start cutting. I'm cutting things. That's freaking awesome. And then I can come over here, you know, just grab that and I can start moving clips around in my timeline. Now, I'm not doing any great cutting. This is probably only my second time using this for this, but as you guys can see, it's fully functional performing all kinds of stuff. You could hotkey any set of keys to pretty much anything that you want. I imagine a lot of people could take this and get really, really fast, really take advantage of a common object that a lot of us just have laying around because a lot of editors are nerds and gamers, and maybe they're not nerds, but they just like to play video games. Who knows what? But this can be made into an awesome tool. I know I'm gonna be looking for new ways to use it because it's always there, it's always connected. Why not take advantage of that? Make things more efficient because we're editors and that's what we like to do. The quicker we can do something, the better. I thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Steve Douglas for Editor for Days. If you guys could, please leave a comment down below. Like and subscribe, it helps me out a lot and I will see you peeps next time.